Welcome to Picks with the Professor, the show where a real statistics professor gives you sports betting tips. This is Monday, April 1st, Major League Baseball. We started off the weekend really nicely. Hopefully we can keep that going today uh, into, into Monday games. Uh, 14 games on the slate, which is going to be one of our stronger Mondays of the season other than like a Labor Day, Memorial Day <clears throat> type situation. Uh, so a lot to look forward to, including three day baseball games. Uh, but again, remember if you haven't signed up yet for your free trial, free 10 day trial over on dub club, that QR code, the link in the description, take you right there, uh, and get you set up when you can't watch the show, you'll get the picks. Uh, on top of that, you'll get the picks over the weekend. If there's no show Saturday shows, at least right now are going to be very hit or miss, uh, for the moment we haven't done Sunday shows really here ever. Uh, and we've done almost a thousand shows by now, which is kind of crazy to think about. But uh, so we're on occasion we'll have a show. We'll have stuff picks over on Dub Club for that. You get summary information, more information, details, run lines, reverse run lines, first fives, all sorts of goodies. Uh, and of course, access to our Discord chat. We have a lot of people looking out for each other. It's a great community of people, uh, you know, finding plays they all like, collaborating with each other in different sports as well. Uh, a lot of fun over there on that Discord chat group of great community. So check that out if you have not yet today. Uh, here's the recap again. We, we don't do this too often. And, and the reason why we don't want to get too distracted by what happened yesterday. I know this is a very much a what have you done for me lately business. Uh, if you're new here, uh, that's not how we run things around here. If you've been here for a while, you probably are well aware of that. You've probably been trained by me at this point. We're looking at the big picture. We're looking at the long row. Of the, the, the long term. So far, the A grade signs have done great. The A grade totals uh, four, 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 and one. I need to update that. Uh, the, the Dodgers game just finished with a push, so four, four, and one. So hoping to get the win there on that and get that into positive. But uh, you know, so far, you know, it's a small sample size. Uh, the extra kind of plays over on Twitter. Uh, and again, if you don't have Twitter or don't want to search me for over there, you get those with Dub Club uh, as well. So just another reason to, to check that out. Free show picks last week were great. Again, uh, we're looking at the long run. This is real early, so you know we're not getting too high, high and mighty excited here. But I like where the model is going. Uh, for the most part, there's only been a couple of the A grades that I'm a little bit scared of. For the most part, I tend to agree with what's doing it. The model's tending to tell us there's value on teams I want to fire away on, which is good in situations that I like. Uh, obviously, as we move forward and I get to see a little bit more of how this season's model is going to progress, how the players are going to. Uh, perform and whatnot, we'll have a better understanding of the model and we'll, we'll, we'll be able to advance from there. But so far, the A grades uh, looking strong. We have a bunch of them here for you today on show. A couple of them not on show because we have games with A grade on the side and the total. And so, uh, again, Dub Club is the place to be for all of that. The other thing, of course, as always, if you have not yet, check out BetUS. We always will be shopping around getting the best price, the best deals on every single game. Every five cents you can save matters. And folks, it's not quite this simple, but the, the reason the A grades work and are successful it, it can be boiled down to mostly we have a lot of wiggle room by picking only the games where those prices are really good. One way you can continue to get good, better prices is by shopping around. So if you don't already have multiple sports books at your disposal, if BetUS is not one of them, check them out. They have great baseball prices, free or excuse me, 125%. Bonus on your first three deposits. It does come with a rollover, but again, with all the baseball bets we'll be making here, you can run through that in no time. You can check them out if you have not yet. Bet US, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. Bet US, where the game begins. We'll get started here with afternoon baseball, Braves and the White Sox. Folks, the White Sox, not good. We knew that coming into the season. Uh, you can see that with the metrics on screen, the offense at a 73. That's almost two standard deviations below league average. It's among the worst. The bullpen, uh, two standard deviations worse than league average. Uh, and, and the starter that they're going to throw tomorrow here, Chris Flexen, is a guy who would love to fade. He's not a very good pitcher. He's just eating innings for this team. Again, I'm sure he's a nice guy. Uh, so, again, no offense to him. And he's, he's a much better pitcher than I am, right? So, so, so normal caveats apply here. But relative to the fact that we're comparing him to the to the other, you know, the best 100 baseball pitchers on the planet, you know, he, he falls below them, unfortunately. And, and so he's a guy that, 
you know, struggles to get out these elite hitters. And the Braves offense is fantastic. One of the top offenses in baseball. And they're just so deep with arms. They'll throw Charlie Morton here in their fourth game. You can see that 88 grade rating there on screen is still pretty good. Now, Morton's been a guy who has sometimes struggled starting the season, sometimes struggled finish the season as he's gotten older. He's one of the older pitchers in baseball at this point. And so, you know, that's the, the kind of tread lightly uh, a portion of this pick, just FYI, you know, when he gets rolling in the middle of the season, you feel a little bit better with him, but starting a new season with him being older, you just never really know. So that's kind of the one, the one asterisk on this, but, but here's the thing about this game is even if he doesn't really have it, the Braves have a ton of great arms. They won't let him hang out there forever because you know, it's a long season and you saw him with, with Max Fried on, on Saturday. Um, you know, they're not going to let him throw 45 pitches in the first inning. And so that would not be ideal, but they have so many good bullpen arms against this White Sox offense. Even if that happens, they'll be able to recover most likely. They should be teeing off and scoring plenty of runs in the White Sox. Sideline says the Braves win the 74% of the time. And so the official pick on this one, A grade Braves minus one. The implied odds on this are minus 171. And again, if you do not shop a place that has a minus one, the way you make this yourself is you bet to win a certain amount of money on the money line and you turn around and you risk that exact same amount on the run line. And that creates a minus one market for you because if they win by exactly one, you will break even. So it's a push at that point. If they win by more, you win both the bets. If you, uh, if they lose, then you, you lose both the bets. So that kind of creates that minus one for you. So you can always make it yourself. Uh, even if you don't shop at a place that has the minus one, but I like the minus one here simply because, uh, you know, I don't like playing the money line at a really steep price. The money line price is still a good deal according to the model. So if you are looking at some sort of, you know, maybe afternoon money line parlay, if that's your thing with the next game we're going to talk about, I don't think that's the craziest thing to do. Now, here's the thing though. The the, the problem with parlays, I mean, if you already know this, you're like, yeah, I've heard this speech before, but in case you're new here, I want to make sure that, that you hear this. The problem with the parlays, what people do is they'll put the same pick in like six parlays. And that's a problem. The other thing with parlays is they'll put things in parlays that aren't good picks. If it's not a good pick by itself, it's not a good pick at a parlay. All right. So as long as you're doing that, as long as you're keeping the teams to a reasonable size, because, you know, those 18 parlays, it might be fun and you might hit one once every blue moon, but you lose a lot of them. Right. So if you're sticking to your two, maybe three at most team parlays. You're not putting the same team in all of your parlays uh, and you're not just picking things with big minus odds because they're they're for sure going to happen. Right. As long as you're not doing those things, it's not crazy. So Braves money line, the next game money, line, not a crazy thing. But if you do that, maybe don't play the minus one or minus one and a half. Because you're already invested. We don't want to overinvest in one team. That's the other thing with parlays. People get too invested in one thing. So we don't, we don't want that. Uh, but we like the Braves here. Like the money line if you do it at a parlay. Like the minus one to give you the better odds. If you want to do the minus one and a half, you can. I just coded in the minus one. I'll play a little bit worse on the odds here as long as they're in our favor. Because this to me is about the mental grind. This is me personally, the mental grind of baseball. It's a long season, it's over 2,000 games. And to me, there's nothing more frustrating than a run line bet winning by one and then not knowing what you're even rooting for at the end of the game. That's just super frustrating. So I like to play this minus one. That way, if it pushes, I say whatever and move on. If they win more than one, great, right? So we are playing a little bit worse odds. So personal preference, if you like, if you don't mind that as much, I think Braves run line is a, pr a pretty good way to look here. This White Sox seems really bad. Let's look to fade them until the market really starts treating them like they are the worst team in baseball because they might be the worst team in baseball. So until they're treated like that, they're going to be a good fade. This Braves team is legit. And until they start getting priced ridiculous, let's back them. So this is a great opportunity to back a great team, fade a bad team. And the reason we have the model is to help us know that it's okay to do that because later on in the season, these two teams – I mean, these two teams presumably won't play, but we'd have a similar matchup later on in the season. And the money line price might be, you know, minus, you know, 350 on the Braves or something. And then we, the model would help us be like, no, that's a little bit too steep, right? They only win 75% of the time. That means your cutoff is minus 300. Okay, that's your break even pricing and all these metrics and everything you get on Dub Club so you can see all this, where your break even points are, where you don't want to play them beyond, what the A grade threshold is, et cetera. Uh, so, again, all this to say, the model, helps us know, hey, there's still good value on this play. Let's fire away on the Braves. You're probably looking at the same Braves. I, we got the green light from the model to do it. Okay, that doesn't mean every big favor is going to be a green light. Later on in the season, I think, I'm think i guessing the prices are going to get kind of crazy. We're not going to be on it early on. 
the market is not realizing just how bad this White Sox team is. Let's fade them. Braves minus one A grade at minus one seventy one. Also at this time slot, home opener for the Cubs, both Chicago teams here, uh, playing the afternoon baseball game, uh, home opener. And uh, we're going to back the home team on this one, the Cubs. I love fading the Rockies at this point, especially on the road. We love fading them on the road last year. They have a better home field advantage than every other team in baseball. And that's factoring in the model. And so we will fade them a lot less at home, but on the road, they're just a really good fade. Again, until the market adjusts and starts treating them that way, and in those situations, that's when the model will tell us, hey, we love fading them, but the price is not right. And so we're going to pass. But in this case, the price is right to fade the Rockies. It's only a B grade, though. Cubs minus 202. The A grade price is minus 190. So we got to get a better price for that A grade. But Cubs minus 202 is the B grade pick. Cannot play the minus one tonight. I'm recording this here, Sunday night. Dodgers game just ended. Cannot play the minus one. The run line is not established in Wrigley. If you've been around here for a while, you've heard me talk about this, or you're, or if you've been betting baseball a while, you know this. They don't do run lines or totals quite as fast for, for Cubs games at a lot of books because the – and the way said they calculates it as well is the same way. The, the the run line probability is calculated based off the total. If the total's lower, uh, it's easier to have a one-run game. The total higher, it's harder to have a one-run game. So that's factored into it. We don't do the totals until we get closer in because the weather at Wrigley is the biggest impact of all weather in baseball. Uh, low grandstands, wind really matters. And uh, there's usually a lot of strong wind coming off the lake. So we, we, we don't have a total, we don't have a run line, so we can't talk about the minus one market. Uh, that would be a good way to look. Though as well, this minus one, same thing. Uh, if if and when that's available to you, I get bet to win something on the money line, risk that on the run line that creates the minus one. This Cubs team is very respectable. Decent offense, decent bullpen. Obviously losing Justin Steele for at least a month. That hurts them. Doesn't matter today. Uh, Shote Imanaga will get the ball for them. Projects to be a pretty solid little pitcher here uh, for them. It'll be a whole lot better than Dakota Hudson, who uh, the model just has no faith in. So, this is pretty straightforward. As you can see on screen, Cubs win this a nice 69% of the time. Um, you know, they're at home, which is a, more of a benefit than the Braves, uh, but they don't have that Braves offense. So the Braves are a little bit more likely to win because of that offense. But otherwise, I mean, this is a big mismatch here in these 2 p.m. games. Uh, Braves on the road and then Cubs here at home, mainly because this Rockies team is terrible. We saw it this weekend. They were able to eke out one win against the Diamondbacks, but that's kind of what we would have expected here. If you're backing the Diamondbacks in all four games, uh, you were laying some minus odds, but you still profited because you won 75% of them. And if you did like we did, we played a bunch of the minus ones. Uh, they cover those, which means your odds are even better. So that's the bottom line is favorites you can play. You just got to win them more. And so you got to be careful about that. Well, I like playing the favorites when they're fading really bad teams and the Rockies and the White Sox might be the two worst teams in baseball. And yet the market is still not treating them like they're as bad as they are, treating them like they could be decent teams, like they might win 65, 70 games. These teams aren't, I don't think at least. So uh, we're going back to Cubs here again. B grade, minus 202 money line pick here. Minus one will be an appealing option when that's available to us. And if you are a money line parlay type player, Braves Cubs seems to be a smart investment. Just don't get too carried away with how much you're investing in these games. We don't want to be too extended on one game because baseball is random, and we know we're going to lose some of these minus 200 picks. That's okay. We aren't going to go, you know, 75-0 and 0 this year on minus 200 picks. We do think we're going to be able to win more than we're going to win probably about 70% of them, but that means we're going to lose 3 out of 10. All right, and that's what this thing here says, right? It says the Rockies win this three out of 10 times. Three out of 10 things will happen three out of 10 times. We play this game 10 times, we're going to win seven, we're going to lose three. So don't get over-invested just because I like it and just because you like it because that three out of 10 times could happen tomorrow. We don't know. So it's a good long-run play because we win this seven out of 10. At the end of those 10 games, our bankroll's higher than it was when we started. So many of you already know this. I'm preaching to the choir. Just make sure we're on the same page here. I like the Cubs, like the Braves. Don't go too heavy on them, but they are smart picks, even though they are favorites. Just because they're favorites doesn't mean they can't have value. Late afternoon, home opener here in our nation's capital. The Pirates and the Nationals. We're going to pass on the side on this one, the surprisingly 4-0 Pirates, uh, although maybe they're 4-0 because they played the Marlins. We'll talk more about the Marlins later. I don't really know if that's good on the Pirates, bad on the Marlins. Some variants with a couple extra inning games in there. 
uh, or what, but, uh, you know, Pirates looking good. So the season, that's the other contender for one of the weaker team, one of the contenders for weaker teams in baseball. The difference with the Nats is that their offense is a little bit more respectable potentially, uh, than, you know, maybe than the Rockies and the, and the White Sox, but as you can see on screen, not by much, they get a 75 grade. They're the Pirates offense, not good, but better than the Nats at a 90. Marco Gonzalez for the Pirates, not a guy the model likes. Now that we're getting into a lot of the fours and fives, which seems a lot higher numbers than we saw here on the first couple of shows that we had. We'll roll back around to those aces soon enough. Uh, but Marco Gonzalez, a lefty, not a great pitcher. McKenzie Gore for the Nats, very solid. A guy that probably got a little bit too much hype was a prospect. Everyone loved him. Didn't really justify maybe some of that high, but he's still he's still solid. Don't don't get me wrong here. Still a 97 grade that's better than average. Again, if you're new here, 100 is average. Lower means less runs. Higher means more runs. So hitting you what higher numbers pitching you want lower numbers. So McKenzie were again not bad, uh, not great. But here's the thing when you look at it, even though uh McKenzie, I'm not trying to rain his parade, you know, very solid pitcher, he will have the edge against the pirates because he's very respectable. Pirates offense below average. Marco Gonzalez, not high on him, but he will have the edge against the Nats offense because, again, he's closer to average than the Nats offense is. So all of these pitchers will have the advantage there. The one concern we have is when we get to the Nats bullpen, that might be where the Pirates take advantage a little bit. But otherwise, the Pirates bullpen gets even better. It's one of their strengths. So we're going to go under in this game, under nine Talk about key numbers in baseball, of course, your odd numbers are all your key numbers because you cannot have a final score of three to three, four to four, five to five. That doesn't mean even number scores can't happen. It's just that of all the possibilities, the way you get to eight, for instance, you can't have four to four. You can have five, three, six, two, seven, one, eight, zero, but you can have four, four. There's more ways to get the odd numbers, uh, especially as you get higher, higher up there. So key number here under nine, a grade play under eight and a half, not an a grade play, even though the model says 8.2. Under eight and a half, the wrong in that key number is a little bit less exciting. Under nine, a grade play on this one. The biggest reason why is that even though the Nationals Park has played fairly hitter friendly in the last several years, the weather is very pitcher friendly. You can see that on screen there. The adju weather adjustment is minus 12%, so a slight bump to the expected runs based off the park, but we're bringing that right down based off of very uh, pitching friendly weather for this one. And again, as a reminder, you get all of this information for the weather on every single game and to pick on the side of the total of dub club. So again, if you're not there with us already, you need to check that out. And of course, as part of that cheat sheet and the reason, uh, or what I'm calling the, the, the notes, the study notes, the lecture notes, right? Since we're sticking with this professor theme here, the reason this came about was I made these notes for myself so that I had something to look at here on screen before I made these slides. Uh, and the weather here, we're going to have winds blowing in at 5 to 10 miles an hour and upper 50 degrees. Balls just not going to fly uh, in that park. You're going to have to hit it really well. doesn't mean you can't have home runs, you, you know, uh, but you're going to have to hit it really well in order to get a home run in that park. So the under nine on this one, like the fact that we have that push protection on nine, is the A grade play in that one. To the night slate here, 6.35 p.m. Eastern start. I love these half-hour early starts rather than all these starts at 7 o'clock. Uh, it's nice to get them going a little bit early. The Orioles here, as you can see, the team I'm sporting now uh, with this uh, beautiful uh, hat and jersey combo that we've, we've got going here. Orioles, uh, this Royals team is not good. The Orioles are. I mean, it's kind of that simple. I'm a little surprised we've been able to back as many favorites as we have to start the season. I feel like we did this a little bit last year as well, but it was like two years ago, three years ago. I mean, it seemed like early on we were just taking a lot of dogs and I think a lot of the dogs hit and that did really well. I'm wondering if there's been like a market adjustment or something because early on in the season, a few years ago, the market almost treated the, the, the underdogs like they were truly terrible. Like we knew they were really bad. Um, now in the last couple of years, it's like they've got a little bit too much respect. Like people are like, Oh, well, these teams may not be that bad. I mean, we know there's a pretty good discrepancy here between the Orioles and the Royals. We we backed the Orioles uh, on their first two games. Didn't back them on Sunday. Didn't have a good price um, a form here to finish off. So we're 2-0 back in the Orioles this year. We're going to back them again. A grade play here. One of my favorite plays of the day here at minus 153 is not play of the day simply because we like to give our play of the day out at closer to even money odds. Uh, rather than something that's a little bit steeper. Uh, but minus 153 is great value on the Orioles, who win this almost two out of three times. The break-even price for this is closer uh, to minus 200. The A-grade threshold here, 
uh, minus 155. So we just eke in to that A grade. So make sure you're shopping around. If it's minus 160, I think that's fine uh, to play it as an A grade. Above that, I'd still be playing the Orioles at minus 170. It's just we've, we're starting to lose some value at minus 170, minus 180. But they're the better team here. It's not even close. They have the better starter in Dean Kremer versus Michael Waka. As you can see, their on screen model says uh, Kremer is solidly better. The Orioles bullpen, even without Bautista, solidly better. Their offense is better. The Orioles have been a disrespected team. I still think they're being disrespected uh, here. Maybe not by quite as much as they were last year, but I still think they're being disrespected here. So a great play on the Orioles at minus 153. One of my favorite plays here of the day. Reds, Phillies, uh, we're going to go under nine in this one. Also an A-grade play, same reason we talked about earlier here, weather in Philadelphia, similar to the weather in Washington, a 10% downward adjustment on runs based off of the expected weather on, on that. And of course, we'll have an update in the morning for Fun Dub Club to, to get closer in on this weather, just to make sure uh, you know that we're, we're seeing it right. But at least as of right now, 20-ish uh, hours before first pitch, Temperatures about 50 degrees, wind blowing side to side, not very strong. So really just cold temperatures, ball not really flying uh, there very much. And a pitcher in Christopher Sanchez, who the model's fairly high on, I think, relative to expectations. He's pretty solid. Maybe not, you know, he's not ace material. He's not as good as their, their, their top two guys, but not bad. Andrew Abbott, a very also not bad pitcher, a guy whose numbers are going to look a lot better away from Cincinnati, especially in the summer when the ball flies there. So two decent pitchers. The Reds' offense, not that good. We talked about them earlier um, already this season. Losing a guy like Matt McClain, uh, losing uh, Nova Marte as well, uh, losing TJ Friedel. Uh, you know, it, their, their offense is bad, but it's just not quite great. And, and we've seen the bullpen a little bit shaky at times this weekend uh, already. You know, so not a great team. Um on this one, but the weather should help out. Andrew Abbott pitching should should help out. Uh, the concern we have for this under is the Phillies scoring runs on the Reds bullpen. But otherwise, uh, you know, I have pretty good faith in Sanchez to hold the Reds down, have faith in the Phillies bullpen uh, to hold them down. And again, this weather is what helps us along with the nine. If this number is eight and a half, uh, it, it would still be an underplay. As you can see on screen, model project eight runs on average, eight point zero runs. Uh, we are carrying this to one decimal place, so 8.0 runs. So eight, under 8.5 eight would be a the 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 right way to look, but I'd rather pay a little bit of juice here and go under 9. So we are at under 9, minus 120 is the official odds for this one as the 8 grade under there. The aforementioned Marlins, I, I, don't, I don't know what to make of this team at this point. 0-4, oh they just can't quite seem to get out of their own way. They're going to send Max Meyer to the hill, a, a young prospect who's been hyped here. The last couple of years, you can see there's no grade on screen there. The model is not quite got enough on him to put him in uh, to its starting pitcher database, and it's not a grade yet. Um, he'll have one after the start. So for right now, the model is saying we can't really do much more than treat this as a bullpen game uh, because we just don't have a lot of faith in him going six innings. Now, he might go six. That's obviously possible. But when you have a young guy like this, we have enough data on young pitchers and what teams do with them. It's it's unlikely he goes deep into this game unless he's just cruising, and, and, and that could happen. But his Angels offense is still good, right? Mike Trout's still really good. They're healthy at the start of the season. Obviously, they lose a lot with, without Otani, but this is still a good Angels offense. And so it'd be surprising if he just, like, cruises. Otherwise, I mean, we're kind of expecting, like, four innings from him because teams don't tend to push their young prospects. Like this doesn't mean they won't. I'm just saying we're just going off of the data here. Uh, that's that's what we do. So the model is saying he's not going to pitch deep enough, long enough. Um, it's not like his his opposition though is going to be that tough. Chase Silseth, a 107 grade, not very good. And this Angels bullpen is terrible. So the Marlins. That's the other thing too. They have a good bullpen. So the model's looking at that, saying like they don't need Meyer to go seven innings because they got a bunch of good arms. They got they're deep. And the bullpen that were last year was their strength. So they've got plenty of arms to go to. The Angels don't. Of course, that flips because the Marlins offense isn't too good, but the Angels is. So uh should be a relatively entertaining game, at least, which is why the uh, price on this is basically a pick em. Uh, But we're going to go over eight and a half. It's an A-grade play. Minus 105 is the odds on this one. And it's similar to what we talked about when we're going over. We don't want to go over nine and a half. Uh, we would go over nine of that push protection, but over eight and a half. Makes a lot of sense. I wouldn't worry about paying juice to go over eight 
Eight runs could obviously happen in this game, but eight is not going to be uh, as common as seven or nine would be. And so average number of runs here is 9.2, makes over eight and a half, a pretty strong look. I Bottom line is, well, I don't love this Marlins offense. They should be able to score off of Silsef and the Angels bullpen. And this Angels offense is good enough to score runs. Don't know off who and how, when, but they should score something. So uh, A grade over eight and a half in Anaheim and Miami. 650 p.m. Eastern Rangers and the Rays. We're going to go Rangers on this one at plus 103 B grade. It is one of our favorite, the wrong team favorite games, WTF. But uh, unfortunately, the discrepancy between the expected win probability and the implied probability is not good enough to make it an A grade. Only a B grade pick here. The A grade threshold just misses at plus 105. So you're basically to an A grade, but you're not quite there yet. The model says the Rangers win this 52% of the time. Uh, the model last year tended to like the Rays a little bit more than they should have, than I think it should have personally. Uh, so anytime I can fade the Rays, I like it. We faded them on Sunday uh, with an A group on the Blue Jays. There was a uh, concern about how deep Gaussman would go, but I think we kind of nailed about what he would do. Uh, and the Blue Jays ran away with that one. So anytime I can fade the Rays, I like too, because the model just has a thing for the Rays. Their bullpen's just okay. The Rangers' bullpen's actually better. Uh, offensively, the Rays' offense is decent, and it was strong last year, but this Rangers' offense is also good. Uh, and, of course, Dane Dunning versus Ryan Pepio, the Rangers will have an edge starting pitchers. The Rangers will have an edge everywhere. They're on the road, but that should balance out. This is pretty close to a coin toss, but it's a coin toss. I lean Rangers, so plus 103 is a worthwhile investment. Two cents away from an A grade. So if you chop around and get plus 105, you've got you an A grade there. Even at even money, uh, this would still be a B grade. And what makes, uh, I think, a lot of sense to back the Rangers, even at minus 105 uh, would still be, I think, a pretty reasonable investment on the Rangers here if they are to truly win this 52% of the time. The model's like Dane Dunning. Uh, and again, I think it respects the Rays a little bit too much. So anytime it's a B grade fan on the Rays, it, it, I think it makes a lot of sense to, to, to fire away. So Rangers plus 103. Tigers and the Mets. We're going to go under eight. And this one is the model project seven and a half runs, minus 105. B grade pick for us here. Not quite good enough to get to the uh, A grade. Either the win on eight or, you know, plus odds gets us to that A grade. Um, bottom line here you have a very pitcher friendly park uh, at City Field. You have slightly pitcher friendly weather. And this one, as you can see, the minus 8% adjustment there. Upper 40s in this one, a slight breeze out, which will help the ball carry a little bit, but that temperature is going to be the biggest decrease to expected number of runs. The fact that we're talking about upper 40s and two respectable pitchers, Sean Maniah for the Mets, who found it last year after kind of wandering in the desert for a couple of years, it seems like. And Reese Olsen, a young guy for the Tigers that we've liked ever since he's come up. Decent enough pitching. This Tigers offense isn't great they did okay against the white Sox, but that was the white Sox. and the mets obviously lol it's the mets but mets are still better than the white Sox are despite the fact that neither one of those teams has won a game yet uh but the mets decent bullpen tigers good bullpen i mean there's just enough pitching the hitting's just not great in this one that eight seems too high this feels like this number should be set at seven and a half and they should make you think a little bit about it but the fact that we get the win on eight is like a bonus makes a lot of sense but i think seven's the most likely outcome here so uh, even under seven and a half, I think I would still be down with. Uh, but I, again, the, the bonus part that I like about this is the fact that we get the one on eight because um, this game could easily land something like five to three. Uh, so again, just not enough hitting for me here. Decent enough pitching. I kind of trust Shamanaya. I think this number is a little bit inflated because people are thinking about Shamanaya from a couple years ago. Back half of last season, he was actually pretty decent. Uh, and again, Reese Olsen is the guy I like. So I like both these starting pitchers. I like both these bullpens. Uh, these offenses, just nothing to write home about. And a very pitcher-friendly ballpark on a cool night. Under eight in Detroit and New York. Uh, one. Only one game at 8 p.m. Uh, Eastern time. Blue Jays and the Astros. Uh, Astros have yet to win a game this year, despite having a lead uh, in the first three. And uh, the go-ahead run on the base in the fourth one. Uh, haven't yet figured it out how to win. We're not going to take a side, though. We're going to go over on this one. Bowden to Francis is a guy I expect the Astros to hit around pretty well. Ronald Blanco is a guy I expect the Blue Jays to hit around pretty well. Both these offenses are good. Astros offense is better. But this Blue Jays offense is still very good. Both these pitchers are below average. This is a great matchup of good offenses, bad starting pitchers. Now, both these bullpens are an improvement, and so I expect both these guys to have short hooks. Here's the thing. 
the Astros bullpen, I watch more of the Astros than Astros fan. I watch a lot of baseball in general, but I watch try to watch more of the Astros. Uh, their pen isn't looking great at this moment with regards to its rest. They got a Brayu back for Saturday. He promptly threw in both Saturday and Sunday. Um, they've used uh, Hater now a couple times. I mean, they've they've used Presley a couple times. They're, they're, they're using guys at this point, and they're not holding leads, which is a, a concern for – it doesn't really matter for the side for this game. So we're not covering that here, but they're, they're using those guys, and, and they aren't looking great, and now they're not like they're fresh and rested. So the Astros' bullpen's better, but it hasn't done great so far, and they're not exactly well rested. It's not like – it's not like they got blown out the last game. You had an off day, and now like every it's, everyone's ready to go. Like you've got a questionable starting pitcher here. I just don't know if you're turning the bullpen early. Like if I'm watching this game as an Astros fan, right? Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if the bullpen's up in like the fourth inning. And as, as a fan, I'm like, how are we going to get? How are we going to do nine innings here? Like I don't see how we're going to do that without giving up like three or four more runs. And so I think you've got a great chance for both these teams to put up five runs. Uh, we're going to go over nine, a great pick on this one. The Astros have been fairly hit or miss offensively. Uh, some of those Yankees pitchers pretty solid. Some of that's just not hitting with runners in scoring position. I'm not deterred by that. Uh, that's things that are random. Uh, we'll come around. They did find their last year. We know historically those are things that, that aren't predictive. So uh, when the Astros have scored runs, I think it's just been kind of that fluky. You're going to randomly have times where guys are on and you're hitting well and you're going to have times where you aren't. And there's not, there's no way to know when that turns around. It's not like that's predicted to the next day. It's just completely random. Um, one day your team will, and, and you know, this is a baseball fan viewer. I'm sure you watched the game growing up and you've seen this, right? You, you, one day you'll end up with the leadoff guy gets on every inning and the next thing gets a hit, and then it's out, 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 no runs, right? And the next game, you know, you'll go five innings with nothing, and then all your hits bunch up, and you get six runs in the sixth inning, right? That's just the way baseball goes. It's one thing to the next. It's not like a sport where it's like a hot goalie, where it's like you want to ride. Like, you just never know what's going to happen. So Astros bats will break out of it against a guy like Bowden Francis. is a great opportunity for it to happen. And the Spurgeon's offense can score runs. Someone's scoring some runs in this game, most likely maybe not both. If both do this over, it's going to fly through. If not, one team's probably going to get some runs. We got a great shot to win this. If not push on nine, the only way we don't win this one is if both offenses don't show up. It's possible, but I like my chances at night. I don't like over nine and a half. Same reason we talked about earlier, but I'll go over nine here. A great picks. The model thinks closer to 10 runs. 9.40 p.m. Eastern, Guardians at the Mariners. This one might be one of my other favorite plays of the day. Uh, Guardians minus 109. I love this pick here, mainly because I'm a big Tristan McKenzie fan. He's about a standard deviation if better than Emerson Hancock, who I don't really have a ton of faith in. We've loved these Mariners unders, but the under in this one doesn't look as strong. And the reason why is because Emerson Hancock is projected to not be that good. This Guardians offense is respectable, but as we mentioned before, they're still a little bit left-handed heavy. That makes them weaker against lefties, stronger against righties. And so while the Mariners still have some top guys at the back end of their bullpen, here's the thing about this game and why it's Guardians. When you've got a guy like Luis Castillo, when you've got George Kirby going, when you've got uh, Logan Gilbert going, and you can get through six innings, especially if you can get through seven, and get to the back end of that Mariners bullpen, you're doing okay. But they've got some injuries right now. Their depth is really lacking. A guy like Emerson Hancock, if he can't make it six innings, and I don't think he can, if he's only going four innings or five innings, the Mariners have some innings to find from some guys who aren't very good. And this Guardians offense is decent enough, especially again against righty start off against Hancock to knock him out, to score some runs. Whereas this Mariners offense uh, projects to be on the wrong side of things against McKenzie. McKenzie will have the edge. And this Guardians bullpen is good again, like it's been. So the model gives the Guardians a 56% chance to win. That makes minus 109 just eke into an A grade. The A grade threshold is minus 110. So minus 110 gets gets you the A grade, that or better. Probably my second favorite play of the day here behind the official play of the day. So I love me some Guardians on the road. And this one, they did really well against the A's this weekend. Uh, couldn't quite uh, finish things off on that last game against them. But again, luckily for us, we backed the Guardians in the first, um, you know, whatever it was, 
three games in that series, then back in the last game. So it worked out pretty well for us. Or the model said they weren't worth taking on Sunday, but they are worth jumping back on here again um, on Monday night. And then 10, 10 p.m. Eastern. Um, uh, that's the ticker's wrong on that. We're going to go uh, 9.40 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Yankees and Diamondbacks. Uh, we're going to go Luis Gill here is a similar situation uh, that we had previously uh, with Max Meyer. The model is not uh, confident enough in him that he's going to go deep enough to give him a rating just yet. Uh, at this point, so for the time being, he does not get an official grade, uh, but we aren't expecting him to go extremely deep in this. Ryan Nelson for the Diamondbacks uh, barely gets into the, <laughs> into the model threshold, to be honest. This is a game where the Yankees probably have an edge pitching. Uh, when you look underneath the hood, the model likes Luis Gill a little bit more than Ryan Nelson. Not to say Ryan Nelson is an upset. Uh, but the model likes Luis Gill more than Ryan Nelson. Doesn't really think either one's going to go deep, even if Gill goes a little bit less deep than Nelson does. And this Diamondbacks bullpen is not bad. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, Seward out hurts. But they're not terrible. They're just not great uh, at this point. And the Yankees bullpen is better. The, the, the issue with this is that the Yankees have used their closer now three of the first four days. You kind of assume he's unavailable, but the Yankees got some good arms. And the big difference maker is the bats. The Yankees' offense is one of the best in baseball. The Steinbeck's team isn't bad, and we loved backing them here uh, against the Rockies. Again, part of that was fading the Rockies, uh, but they did, were you know really good to us here. But but we're going to back the Yankees on this one. Backed them uh, once against the Astros the play of the day, uh, which came through for us, uh, and we're going to back them here. The lone C grade pick of the day, Yankees minus 121. Uh, the C grade threshold to make sure that you are at least at a C grade is minus 126. The A grade threshold is all the way down to minus 109. So we're close to a B grade uh, here. If you get minus 115 into the upper minus one teens, you're to a B grade. Uh, so the Yankees here, small value. But as I mentioned before, the market tends to overprice the Yankees. I think the market's going to overprice the Yankees after a 4 0 start. I have to assume this price is going to go up, 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 uh, just because people are betting on the Yankees. People are betting on teams to start off 4 0. So my perspective on this is knowing that the Yankees almost never have value. Anytime there's a little bit of value, it's worth jumping on. I've said the same thing about the Dodgers as well, which has worked out for us for the most part in the past. If there's a C grade on the Dodgers, it's probably worth taking because they just never have any value, it seems like. And the Yankees, same thing. If it's a C grade, it's probably worth taking uh, because the Yankees are typically overpriced. So if you kind of like do that bias correction, that makes sense. And that doesn't mean that we want to play this as an A grade because if they're overpriced, that doesn't mean that you now have a good price because you've corrected for that. It's just understanding that you're, you know, your C grade in the Yankees and Dodgers are going to be the only times you back them. That's going to be the best times to back them all season uh, relative to all the other times when you might say they're overpriced and I want to pass. Uh, if you play just the games where they're not overpriced, uh, that's when you stand to profit in those games. And so uh, that's what I think here we have here. Yankees minus 121. Again, if you can get minus 125, I think it's worth the play here. I just like, I think the Yankees have a small edge on the mound compared to the Dunbacks pitchers probably for every inning and the Yankees bats are, are better than the Diamondbacks bats. Uh, not again, the Diamondbacks offense is fun. Guerrero looks great. Corman Carroll is amazing. Uh, but you know, judge and Soto and the way a couple of those guys hit this weekend, um, against pretty good Astros pitching. You, you have to like the Yankees bats. So 56 percent chance to win makes the uh, Yankees minus minus one twenty one. Uh, they see grade pick. To wrap us up, you may have noticed there are three games we didn't cover on here. Uh, Cardinals, Padres, Red Sox, A's, Giants, Dodgers. One of these games uh, right now is priced really well. There's just not much to talk about on it, in my opinion. I don't know enough about uh, the pitchers to go deep into it, and we'll see. Maybe there's a play in the morning. If so, that'll be on Tub Club uh, as well. One of these games doesn't have a line yet because... Um, starting pitcher for one of the teams not confirmed. And one of these games is the play of the day that's again available to everyone on Dub Club as well. So uh, these are three games that we're, we're kind of skipping because we can't talk about them or we have the play of the day on it. And so we're uh, not talking about them. So uh, otherwise, though, we've covered the other 11 for you. Hopefully that was a good show for you. But again, Dub Club gets you all those benefits, more picks. Like I said, with the starting pitcher changer, in this case, starting pitcher 
we have no line on it yet because we haven't figured out who the starting pitcher is. And that's changing. We'll update with it. We'll get you official pick on that game as well. So a lot of benefits, reasons to be on Dub Club. That QR code, the link in the description, will start you out with a 10-day free trial if you haven't joined us yet. Otherwise, we'll be back with baseball all week. Hopefully, your season has started off as well as ours has here. And hopefully, we can keep that going.